Hello and welcome to Levi Salomão's series of videos on Brazilian civil liability law. Over the last few years, environmental protection has received great attention from both public and private sectors seeking to strike a balance between a health environment and economic development. Laws regulating environmental liability play an important role in this context. In Brazil, there is a web of federal, state and city rules covering issues such as the air, water, soil, forest and fauna protection. And these rules can be enforced in civil, administrative and criminal courts. This is a very complex legal framework and I'm here today with my colleague Luiz Gustavo Midi for a bird's eye view of some key aspects of environmental civil liability law in Brazil. Civil liability for environmental damages is strict, so it does not matter if there was willful misconduct or negligence on the part of the wrongdoer. Also, such liability is joint and several, so each wrongdoer must bear the consequences of acts performed by any other wrongdoer. There are three main consequences. Primarily, the wrongdoer must recover the environment and revert it to the status quo ante. If that's not possible, then the wrongdoer must take suitable measures to counterbalance the damage. For instance, illegal deforestation may require the planting of trees elsewhere. Money is a last resort. If recovery and set-off are not possible or viable, then the wrongdoer must pay compensation. This, of course, without prejudice to monetary penalties that may be imposed by administrative authorities. Individuals and companies doing business in Brazil should pay close attention to environmental liability. There is much more to it than the basic direct claim of damages against the wrongdoer. Let me give a few examples. First, in some cases, courts may order a defendant to take action to stop or mitigate an environmental damage even if it was caused by a third party. That can happen, for example, if the defendant has bought a land and such land is a source of contamination due to the former owner's activities there. Second, Brazilian law provides for the civil liability of so-called indirect polluters. The problem is, there is no clear definition of indirect polluters in the law. Indeed, it is still disputed if a company financing a polluting activity can be held liable for the related environmental damage. Third, many environmental claims involve requests to pierce the corporate veil of the company being sued in order to hold shareholders, officers and directors liable for its acts. The threshold for lifting the veil is lower under environmental law than in ordinary civil claims governed by Brazilian civil code. Fourth, the Supreme Court has found that the monetary compensation of certain types of environmental damages may be pursued in civil courts at any time. In other words, in certain cases, there is no time limit for public prosecutor or other party with legal standing to seek monies against the wrongdoer. And last but not least, environmental protection is so important in Brazil that this is one of the very rare cases in which not only individuals but also companies may face criminal charges. And further developments in the legal framework of environmental protection in Brazil can be expected. Climate change litigation is over the horizon and could become a big thing soon. Although not clearly regulated in Brazil, these matters are already receiving attention from agents at the public and private sectors and therefore should be followed closely. That's it for now. Thanks and please do watch the other short videos in this series. Goodbye.